after months of banging on about the sorry state of cheating and exploiting, something has finally happened. Like a lightning bolt striking out of the blue, Massive has suddenly grabbed the banhammer and has mercilessly started banning players for exploiting and cheating. When I heard the news, a mix of strange feelings swept over me. I felt content, a feeling of satisfaction, perhaps, dare I say it, optimism. Oh God, I think this is happiness and it feels horrible. <laughs> So, what the fuck has been going on then? After menacing threats and ominous statements, Ubisoft finally grabbed the fucking banhammer and started ruthlessly dishing out headshots to a chorus of squeals and girly clapping from the community, myself included. In a strange twist of fate, Massive is rolling out details of a fuck ton of new content on such a large scale it is only rivalled by the immense scale and impact of the new bugs that came with 1.7. I have a lot to get through, and in no logical order, so let's stick our tongues up this sheep's ass and see how bad it tastes. One of the hot shit topics of the week was the continuing saga of patch 1.8 reveals in the state of the game. Keith Zorg and Terence Potter Spear had been sliding off their seats and revealing more details of skirmish mode, which is clearly the jewel in the crown of 1.8. As previously stated, it's basically a 4v4 pure PvP team mode with no NPCs, set in arenas approximately the size of Bryant Park, with last stand gear normalisation and 10 minute matches, where you can join as a pre-made group or solo. Similar to last stand, doing anything remotely fucking useful will give you XP. Reviving, healing, but sadly not camping at the back and having a quick wank. Which means I might have to come up with a new PvP strategy, I guess. It's basically team deathmatch, with a 20 kill head count to win. Last stand rank and skirmish rank will be consolidated into one PvP rank, and most importantly to many players, classified fucking loot will be a possible reward in the caches. I just hope to fuck it drops at better rates than it does between global events at the moment. Most people I know have not seen a single cunting piece of classified gear since the last GE. It's more rare than a third tit, and it's starting to feel like Barrett's grinding version 2.0. There's some other fluff, like you can do a cheeky emote at the end of the match, about which I have no fucks to give, and some unfinalised details about how the enemy team will be able to inspect your gear. Personally, I'm opposed to this. I think people's builds are their own fucking business. And why the fuck would you want to share that information with players you're trying to fucking kill? Not only that, but by sharing that information to the enemy players, I guarantee that within 48 hours of launch, there will be a paid mod that will analyse the enemy's gear and generate cooldown timers on ults and skills and generally give you the fucking advantage. Skill-based matchmaking will be used to keep games balanced. So if you see me on the enemy team, or if you are in my team, it's highly likely you're a fucking combat ineffective that should go and play Tetris. Just like me. I hope to god the skill based matchmaking is calculated based on factors like your win loss ratio in skirmish. If it's just based on your overall PvP rank, then it's fucked. You can fail your way to max rank. I did. Your rank shows how much you play, not if you're any fucking good. I just needed some new gear and played a lot of matches and capped max level. I hope to fuck they get this bit right. My take on the implementation of Skirmish is that many aspects can be a bit hit or miss, and it won't have such a large impact on how much fun it is. I'm sure once there is a small community of hardcore Skirmish teams, there will be all sorts of screaming and crying from elite players demanding this or that tinkering. But the killer detail here, and perhaps the detail people don't realise is the most important, is the counting matchmaking. Nailing this will be make or break. I'm a hapless cunt at PvP, so if the matchmaking is working as intended, most of the time I should be on a team of other hapless cunts, playing against teams of hapless cunts, and I should expect about a 50% win rate. If you're a pro team, 
you should be put up against pro teams. Get this right, and it will be great for everyone. If I keep queuing up as a solo player and just end up getting fist fucked repeatedly by grade A pre-made teams, then this activity will be pointless for casual players looking for a new way to get a bit of loot and have some fun. And more importantly, get some classified gear outside of a global event. The tagline being sold is, less running, more gunning. Nice if it were true. Having watched a few staged 4v4s in the DZ, I can tell you exactly what the tagline will be for the winning teams. Less running and more turtling. Winning teams will most likely just camp on a bed of support stations and fire turrets and jiggle around from side to side like they're trying to shake an escaped turd down their trouser leg. There'll be a Lone Star player on every team and the higher the rank the battle, the greater the chance the entire cunting match will pass without anyone moving outside of the green circle near the spawn point. If you're a healer on a high ranking team, I strongly suggest you bring a fucking magazine to read. Fine tuning apparently will be done during PTS. But given how the defence nurse were just chucked in 1.7 as an afterthought without any fucking testing or consultation, fine tuning during PTS will be interpreted by many as meaning YOLO. The important thing here is that a lot of people wanted this mode. It's a fan project, and they're getting what they want. The loot looks pretty decent, it doesn't affect PvE only players, it might do good, and it won't do any harm. So no arguments from me. But dear fucking lord, don't anyone dare to start nerfing gear and talents to accommodate the hardcore skirmish teams. Do that, and you will turn a victory into a fucking omni shambles. Update 1.8 will introduce gear optimization and the new gear score, but not a gear level increase. Gear optimization is being described as the next evolution of gear improvement. Until I see that it's not bugged as fucking all hell, or can be exploited, I'm going to replace the word evolution with the word mutation. I'll be happy if I get proved wrong though, but I will laugh my fucking tits off if I start seeing people walking around with a gear score 500 items because they managed to spoof the optimization table. Gear score will range from 256 to 286, with the higher numbers representing how maxed out the 256 level gear items are. Max roll everything, and it will be 286 I assume. This is a long way away and details might change, so I will spare you all the nerdgasm stats ejaculation, so the short version is there will be a bench, where you can spend division tech to max roll all the stats on the gear and make it max roll. You can farm division tech in the DZ, in Westside Pier, and pick some up from the cache in the boo from time to time if you're fully unlocked. It is what it fucking is, and I like the idea. I fucking despise recalibration as it stands. Pulling arse hairs out with tweezers is more fun than standing at that cunting recalibration station, pissing your money down the drain, whilst re-rolling crap roll after crap roll. It's one of the few aspects of the game that actually feels like work. And I mean, like a proper job. So yeah, paying a flat rate to max a stat is pure win in my book. With all the changes however, it's worth noting that there will be no new world tier. Ergo, no fucking gear rank added. I don't care either way. Personally, I would love a fucking excuse to vendor all my gear and start fresh, but I'm a hoarder, so it would be doing me a favour. Fuck it, perhaps I'll just do it for lols. There are also planned stamina and toughness adjustments. No brainer really. Stamina is basically a fucking useless stat. They're going to try and make it a less fucking useless stat. About fucking time. With patch 1.8, there'll be some ominous changes to the Dark Zone. Most notably, what is being referred to as Rogue 2.0. The DZ is pretty much being left alone, with the one notable and controversial issue of Rogue mechanic changes. Basically, friendly fire won't make you go Rogue anymore. You will have to toggle Rogue status on from the UI or some other clunky fucking mechanism. I'm a dyed in the wool PvE player, who only goes into the DZ to cap my weekly, so perhaps I'm not the best person to offer an opinion. But I'm a cunt, so I will anyway. 
The Dark Zone is a fucking violent, aggressive, backstabbing, PvP shithole where people go to enjoy either being the hunter or the hunted, to steal other people's loot or get it stolen. It's far from perfect, but the people that go there seem to fucking love it. This change seems to be an attempt to make it more, dare I say it, PvE friendly. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, but I can tell you how some veteran DZ players may well feel about it. Rogue 2.0 seems to me to be a bit like someone renovating your favourite shithole pub and turning it into a fancy wine bar. Sure, you might get slightly nicer customers, you might get more customers, it might just generally be fucking nicer and make the neighbourhood more pleasant. But for the grumpy old cunts that regularly sit there every lunchtime with their scabby dogs drinking shit beer grumbling about the price of a pint these days, they like it just how it is. They don't want a posh fucking bar, they like coming to this shithole, and after being a loyal customer for all these years, they are rightfully going to feel a bit fucked off about the place being turned into exactly the kind of joint where they won't feel welcome. I can see why some players love the changes, I can see why some players hate them. Personally, I hate the fucking Dark Zone, and that is also precisely the reason that when I go there, it's so fucking exciting. I'm not convinced by these changes. I'm also not convinced that some weird mechanic where you have to toggle out to some fucking menu to turn on rogue status is going to improve the fluidity and immersion of the DZ experience. I guess this is really an issue for the PvP community. I guess it's down to them to decide. With all the patch 1.8 hype out of the way, what other shit is in the frying pan? Well, the RPM and mod exploits are still raging at full fucking pace. The current excuse is that it's more complicated to fix than expected. We'll require a client-side patch, and consoles will get arse fucked as usual because of the patch verification process. When I hear reassurances that people are working on it, I can't help but imagine one random low-level dev sitting in the basement playing minefield on his PC between periodic bouts of nose-picking, arse-scratching, and Olympic levels of napping. Dear fucking god, prove me wrong, Massive. My suggestion would be, if you can't get this shit fixed inside 48 hours, start a fucking dev blog and keep people posted every few hours so there is at least an illusion of urgency. In the meantime, however, some action that genuinely is real and is full steam ahead is the fucking ban wave. Massive are the fucking keyboard gangsters of anti-cheating gaming. They have a long and proud heritage of sitting in their mum's basement, tough talking about their zero tolerance policy and how they're gonna fuck up all cheats while sitting there in their Barbie jimmy jammies doing precisely jack shit about it. In fact, traditionally, they have done worse than jack shit about it and turned a blind eye to certain cheaters and exploiters. In the past, a community manager even live streamed with players who could have only procured all their gear through cheating and exploiting. Fact. I was not alone in being frankly shocked when they actually got out the banhammer and started ruthlessly crushing skulls like fucking Negan on a bad day. Well, good day from his perspective. Not only this, but the traditional members of the community who usually get off scot-free got their skulls beaten in too. Too little too late? Definitely. Will it solve the cheating and exploiting? Definitely not. Does it make a whole bunch of us happy? You can bet your hairy cock and fucking balls it does. Or cunt. I'm not sexist. I don't think this bandwave will do fucking anything to stop the cheating and exploiting as part of the bigger picture. But it sure as shit means a lot of us get to laugh at all the cheaters. I'm really glad it's happening. But nevertheless, it does feel a bit like the bank left the vault door open and everyone ran in and stole the money. Instead of fixing the vault and paying us back our cash, they're putting on a show of hanging all of the thieves. I'm pleased they are finally doing some compliance enforcement on the player base, but this is not a substitute for fixing the exploits. After all, let's not forget whose fault this is. It was also no fucking coincidence that the bandwave started on the exact same day as Destiny 2 launched which was also the day of the proposed boycott organised in protest of the RPM glitch not being fixed. 
on the plus side, at least this means that some of the high profile YouTubers and streamers who got slapped in the fucking chops with a two week ban for cheating can scurry away and make Destiny 2 videos and pretend they didn't get banned. Unless of course, they have a second account. I would also like to offer my commiserations to any players that got mistakenly banned or banned for doing no more than testing bugs and reporting them legitimately. Sure, every cunt that gets banned will claim I was only testing it for fuck's sake and they will be full of shit. I do however know of a couple of players who genuinely only tested it for bug reporting, never used it on any other player or in PvE who have gone radio silent since the ban wave. You guys have genuinely taken a hit for the team and I salute you. Changing the subject now, at the suggestion of a couple of viewers, I'm going to try out a new spot on the dump. The Weekly Division Joke Corner. Anyone who thinks they have a good joke about the division, write them down in the comments and I will pick some out of the hat periodically and read them on the show. For legal reasons I will say now, I am not fucking responsible for these jokes, so keep your finger off the triggered button. You guys provide them, I'll just read the fucking things out. I'm curious to see what we get. I think my conclusion about the state of the division this week is bittersweet. The new content is shaping up to be fairly decent, but if anyone asks, tell them I said it was shit. 1.8 is looking very promising, and 1.7 was actually not shit, but I'll be doing a full autopsy on that later. However, it does seem that the more they are upping their game when it comes to content delivery, the more they are letting critical fucking checks and measures slide. In a fucking nutshell, the more they give us content, the more we are getting bugs. They are going hand in fucking hand. As promising as a lot of 1.8 is looking, I'm genuinely worried it could be undermined by a whole new raft of bugs, just like the bugs that are overshadowing 1.7. Dear fucking lord, do proper paid alpha testing on 1.8. Don't just chuck out a half botched build and rely on PTS to spot everything. Let's face it, most players will just grab the most powerful gear set and run around shooting people in the head like the cunts we are. Do it properly. Do that and 1.8 could be a massive victory. Release it full of fucking bugs and it will all be for nothing. This shit needs to be taken seriously and that will require a fucking checkbook. Only tonight I received a sad farewell from a good friend who has quit this game because of all of the bugs and exploiting. You know who you are. Thank you for everything. Good luck and farewell my friend. I'll see you in the next game. On a happier note, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Uber Timmy from Upper Echelon Gamers. He has been recruited by SkillUp to be his community manager for their up and coming plans for total global fucking domination. I have a lot of time for these two lovely Australians because they both have a lot of time for the community and have a long history of supporting their fellow players. I may also be slightly swayed by the fact that one of my favourite films of all time is Australian. Love Serenade. A wonderful film. Yeah, alright, nobody's going to buy that story for a fucking instant. I was of course talking about Chopper. The wonderful, family friendly comedy. Perfect for children's parties, Christmas fucking day with the family, or my personal favourite as a first date movie. If you haven't seen Chopper, I strongly advise you to watch it. Anyway, I'm sure this is the start of a beautiful relationship and I wish them the very best of luck in future endeavours. I would also like to thank everyone who's been supporting my attempts to cover new content. Despite my shitty fucking console skills and utter nonsense gameplay footage, people have been watching and offering support. Although someone did say that watching me play on console was like watching a monkey trying to fuck a football. Although I reckon it was actually worse than that. Anyways. Thank you kindly everyone, for your support. I guess I've made your ears bleed enough for one day. So for now, good luck, and happy hunting.